All right, well, uh, good evening, friends, whenever it is that you are viewing this, whether it is on Wednesday afternoon, Wednesday evening, on Thursday, or perhaps even uh, on Friday. My name is Kevin Gregory. I have the privilege of serving as the pastor here at Detroit Lakes United Methodist. We are recording this Wednesday, Thursday, Holy Week hybrid service on Tuesday morning, just after uh, getting the news that the schools here in Detroit Lakes were closing for the rest of the afternoon and have already called school for tomorrow. Um, and so it is just going to be one of those holy weeks where we're going to maybe get a foot of snow, although I am, I guess, predicting that at this point. I don't really know. <laughs> but nonetheless, we understand that you all are gathered together this day, this night in your homes or wherever it is that you find yourselves as we are waiting out the snow and hoping to, to still get together the end of the week and on Sunday. Um, and so on Wednesday of this week, we would have come together and had a service where we talked a little bit about what all has gone on this holy week. And on Tuesday this week, we are in the middle of Jesus teaching in the city of Jerusalem. Jesus teaching like he does here in the Gospel of Matthew and in chapter 22 when he says, and he tells the story, when the Pharisees heard that Jesus had left the Sadducees speechless, they met together. And one of them, a legal expert, tested him. Teacher, what is the greatest commandment in the law? And Jesus replied, you must love the Lord your God with all of your heart, with all of your being, and with all of your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it. You must love your neighbor as you love yourself. All the law and the prophets depend on these two commands. And so already this week, Jesus has come into the city of Jerusalem riding on a donkey on Palm Sunday. Jesus has come into the city of Jerusalem and turned tables. Jesus has come into the city of Jerusalem and changed hearts and minds and turned worlds by reminding people of the two central ideas of our faith, that we are to love God and that we are to love our neighbors. And on Thursday, in sort of a centralizing moment of this week, Jesus gathered with his disciples in the upper room. And the Gospel of Matthew puts that whole story like this. On the first day of the festival of unleavened bread, so on the festival of the Passover, the disciples came to Jesus and said, where do you want us to prepare for you to eat the Passover meal? And Jesus replied, go into the city to a certain man and say, the teacher says, my time is near. I am going to celebrate the Passover with my disciples at your house. And the disciples did just as Jesus instructed them. They prepared the Passover. And that evening, Jesus took his place at the table with the 12 disciples. And as they were eating, Jesus said, I assure you that one of you will betray me. And deeply saddened, each one said to Jesus, I'm not the one, am I, Lord? And Jesus replied, The one who will betray me is the one who dips his hand with me into this bowl. And the human one goes to his death just as it was written about him. But how terrible it is for that person who betrays the human one. It would have been better for him if he had never been born. Now Judas, who would betray him, replied, It's not me, is it, Rabbi? And Jesus answered, You said it. And while they were eating, Jesus took bread, blessed it, broke it, and gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat, this is my body. He took a cup, gave thanks to it, gave it to them, saying, Drink from this, all of you, this is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for many so that their sins may be forgiven. And I tell you, I won't drink wine again until that day when I drink it in a new way with you in my Father's kingdom. Then after singing songs of praise, they went to the Mount of Olives. And so may God add a blessing to the reading of this word. Thanks be to God. And today, tonight, we gather then just to do just that. We gather to partake of the bread and the cup. We gather to hear in a second sing a song of praise and to sharpen ourselves and our senses before we head to the Mount of Olives, before we head to Good Friday, and before we head to the rest of the week. And you're reminded that Matthew's gospel one after the other, and in all the Gospels. Jesus tells the disciples that one of them is going to betray him, and then immediately Jesus offers them this meal. There's no break. There's no 
let's get our act together, and then we'll come to the table. But Jesus tells that these people who he has gathered with all for the last three years, Jesus tells these people, one of them, Peter, who we've said is like a rock, but is this person who moments after this story will deny Jesus three times. Jesus gathers with this, these people, one of them who gets the nickname Doubting Thomas here in a moment. Jesus gathers and breaks bread with Judas, who moments after this will leave to go and to get the silver. And so it doesn't matter who you are or where you are or how you are, Jesus comes to offer this meal for you, for us, for the world. We as, as Christians often look at Holy Week through the lens of Good Friday, and that Good Friday informs everything that we, that we do. But the disciples saw this story through the lens of Thursday. Thursday night is when the story was upended for them. The chain of events for them started when Jesus broke bread and shared the wine and did something new with them. And after that, their world was different. And so for them, the central act of this week was this, was the table. And so as we gather together here in a moment, be reminded that God looks at you and says that you are mine. No matter who you are or how you are, that God looks at you and says you belong here. And so Beth's going to lead us in singing the hymn, Be Thou My Vision, as we attune our vision and ourselves for the rest of this week. And so that is our prayer as we enter the back end of Holy Week. Heart of my own heart, whatever befall, be thou my vision, O ruler of all. And so hopefully by now you have gathered together with those who you share a home with. And you've gotten together your own bread, your own crackers, your own juice, your own water, your own wine. And you've come together to partake of this meal. And perhaps even it's a little appropriate that we're gathering together in our homes like this. We gather together like the first Jewish folks did at the very first Passover when they were fleeing from Egypt. It was a little bit hotter then than it is with a foot of snow outside. But they gathered together in their homes and they gathered together to partake of this meal that reminded them that God was about to deliver them. That God was about to deliver them from slavery and from oppression. And so we gather together this night to partake of this meal that has been transformed for us to remind us that God is ever-present in our world. That God comes to claim us as God's own. That God comes to gather us together in community and in grace and love together. And that God looks at each and every one of us and says, You are mine, you are loved, and you are holy. And so gather together with those in your home. Gather together and break bread together. Gather together and be reminded of that story that we just read. 
that on that night in which Jesus gave himself up, he took bread and he blessed it and he gave it to his disciples. He gave it to those friends. He gave it to those that he gathered together and lived life with. And he said, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And later, after they had shared a meal together, after they had continued their evening together, Jesus took one of the cups of the Passover and again blessed it and gave thanks and gave it to you and gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. And so you're reminded this night of the words from Matthew 18. For where two or three are gathered together, there God is with us. And I don't think that there's a place in our world where Jesus is not. And so if you find yourself alone tonight sharing in communion, know that God is with you. Your community is with you. Maybe not physically, but with you. And so take your bread. Beth, you want to come over here? We're going to, we can serve one another. We're doing this off the cuff, folks. (laughs) And so take the bread. And remember, this is the body of Christ, given in love for you. Take the cup and be reminded that this, you're going to dip it. Oh. <laughs> What's happening? Here? Yeah. It was a cup of grace poured out in love for you. Amen. You can take it. And so, God, we give you thanks for this holy meal. We give you thanks for the gift of giving yourself to us. We give you thanks for the gift of your presence. And we ask that you continue to walk with us through this holy week. We ask that you bless us tonight together in our homes, today, together in our communities. We ask that you might take the bread and the cup, the gifts that we have shared together just now, that we might go to share them with others, that others might know you and your love. God, it's in your name we pray. Amen. And so, friends, if you have leftover bread, if you have leftover juice, if you have leftover gifts, and you have a neighbor next door that you want to share this meal with, you're invited and implored to do so. Because Jesus did this this meal together with his community this week. And so thank you for joining us for this fun little excursion. We hope that you're staying safe, staying warm. You're invited to join us again on Good Friday, on Friday of this week at St. Luke's Episcopal for dinner at 5.30 and for worship at 6.30. Hopefully the snow is uh, at least in a place where you can drive and get there. And then come together with us on Easter Sunday this week for worship at 8.15 and 10.15 and gather together with us for another meal for breakfast at 9.15 and Easter egg hunt at around 9.30, 9.40. And so may God's grace, God's love, and the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ go with you this night, wherever you are. Amen.